Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fourth part of our second section here. And what we're going to be talking about in this video is more on modules, only this time the last video was all about how to actually acquire the modules. And this video is going to be more about interacting with the modules, learning more about the modules, and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to show you guys is that you know modules aren't magical. They're just Python programs. So when you download a module, first of all, where does the module go? So here is the Python directory. I showed you in the previous video how to figure out where Python is. But once you get to that Python directory, we can find our modules first by going to lib. So in lib, this is where all of your standard library modules are. So these are all the modules that came with your installation of Python. So we have all kinds of modules in here that do all sorts of fun stuff for us. But then we have third-party modules, which are installed into site packages. So we can click on that. And then within here are all of the modules that I've personally installed. Now, an example, we could look at like matplotlib. This is the module used to do graphing in Python. And then from there, these are all the other sub kind of sub modules basically within matplotlib that we can import. So for example, we could import the finance part of matplotlib. And this is that. And when you import a module, what you're really doing is it's as if you had all of this code in your script. Uh, so that's kind of what you're bringing in. So as you can see, this is part of a module, and all of this is Python code. And I will also note that by reading the modules that you use, you can actually learn quite a bit about the module itself. Most of these modules are going to be heavily commented. So for example, parts Yahoo historical open, close, high, low. That's really simple, but we can also check this, and we can learn all about the parameters here. So adjusted, it's a Boolean, and that means yes or no, basically. So are we looking for adjusted or not, and all that, and so on. And then there's even a version for open, high, low, close to be pulled. Anyway, that's just a, a quick example of like modules and where they will be. But then also, there is another location. So when, when you go to import a module, the Python is going to look for that module in several locations. The first location is actually going to be local, right where your script is. The second location will be within the standard library, which is here. And then the third location will be inside packages. So the primary location that Python is going to look for your module is actually going to be locally. So we're coding right here. This is the script we're writing. What we can do is let's just copy and paste this into this. And I'm just going to call this sample module. Okay. And now we can open up sample module. And let me make the text a little bigger for you all so you can see it. And within here, we're going to just create a simple function, define, uh, and we're going to say, I don't know, output. Okay. And then text. And so this is a function, we call it output, we pass in some text, and all it does is prints the text. And that's it. So that's our sample module, real simple module. But then we can come over to our module, and to use this sample module, we import it, import sample mod, okay? Or actually sample module. And that's all we have to do. And by importing sample module, we can reference things within it, okay? by using the namespace of sample module and then dot and then whatever we want to reference. So that script would be, we want to reference maybe output from that. So we could say sample underscore module dot output and then we can pass in some text like hello. Okay, so we can run that. There it is. Okay, and it prints out hello for us. So we were able to bring in that module that we just wrote in sample module and get some output. Now, when you import modules, you can do all kinds of stuff. So you could say, for example, from sample module import output. And then now we wouldn't need sample module.output. We would just use output. So we can save and run that. And again, we get hello. We can also do from sample module import output. We can rename it basically. We can say as O. Okay. And then we can do O hello. Save and run that. And again, same thing. We get a hello. Finally, the other thing we can do is what if sample module has like, I don't know, a hundred functions that we want to use. 
what we can do is you can say from sample module import and then use this asterisk. Asterisk means everything. So then, again, this needs to be output, however, but the way we can run that, and again, that works, okay? So that's just a quick example of, you know, using modules, interacting with modules, and all that. The only other thing I'm going to mention is a lot of times when you're learning about a module, it's really simple to name your Python script the same thing as that module, <laughs> and this is a huge mistake. And then also you might name it the same thing as maybe a method or a class used in that module, and you might import that. Or you might name it the same thing as that module also imports. And so you would definitely want to be careful about this because, again, the first place Python is going to look for all modules is going to be locally. It's going to be right in that same directory. So even that includes scripts that you import. So if we import sample module, and then sample module just happens to import something else, if we name our script the same thing as that something else, it's going to actually try to import our script instead. And so it's going to create a mess. So make sure that you name your Python files something that is not going to conflict. And if for whatever reason something is going awry and you can't figure it out, always check to make sure you're not using some sort of goofy name because that's going to throw you up. It throws everybody up. But once you get used to it, hopefully you won't name your files bad names anymore. So anyways, that is modules. In the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is databases. And that will be a part of a new section for us, section 3. So stay tuned for that. We'll be using SQLite 3, which is part of the standard library, actually. So here it is for us, SQLite 3. So you won't actually have to install this one. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.